Hey, good afternoon, good morning. Uh, I'm glad that you guys are here today. Uh, depends on where you're at in the United States. So uh, this is a webinar training series that we're, we're, we're doing here at DMP. Um, it, it's for salespeople. Um, I'm Jack. Uh, my name is Jack Conard. I'm the director of uh, sales training. And, and this is a nine-part webinar series that you have an opportunity to polish your sales skills on. Now, we've gone through prospecting already. We've already done prospecting. We've done approaching the sale. We've done upselling. This one here is called Needs Analysis Training. This is going to be about what you do in a needs analysis kind of situation. So, um, so, so pay attention. This is going to be a big one. This is going to be very, very important for you. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to get through some good stuff today. So let's get started if you, if you guys don't mind. Um, first of all, we, we want to avoid the urge. Professional sales reps ask questions and, and let the prospect do the talking. That's what it's all about. You, as a professional salesperson, you need to be asking questions. You need to be listening to what the person is trying to tell you. And you need to be letting them do that. Don't be too anxious to tell them what they know. I've been out with lots of salespeople, and my goodness, you know, they want to, and, and they know stuff. They know a lot of stuff. You guys know a lot of stuff. Trust me, I know that. And you want to tell the prospect, it's not time yet. There'll be a time. This isn't the time to do that. So, so, so don't feature dump. Don't just sit there and drop things and tell them how great things are and what your product will do and all that kind of stuff. Don't feature dump. Let the prospect do the talking. Let them give you all the information that they need to give you. This, th this, is, this is about the, the, the focus is on them. It, it's not about the focus being on you. It's about the focus being on them. And, 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 and you know, like they say, we, we have to first seek to first understand and then and, and then be understood. So we have to let them understand us before we can be understood. So let, let's take a look at a brain teaser here. I, I want to give you a few minutes and, and look at this for just a second and, and try to determine what you think this is. What, what, do, you, what do you think this is? You've got, you've got, well, I'll let you take a look at that for just a second. And, and think about that for just a second. What is that? Let that, let that stew into your mind for just a second. Um, and, and, and what, what that is, it, it's called a paradigm, right? So, so, so when we go back and we look at that, we've got two dimes setting up there. So we've got a paradigm. And that's, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about a paradigm. And a paradigm is how we see the world in terms of our perception and understanding. That's what, the, that's what a paradigm is. It's a filter. It's a filter by which we see everything that's in front of us. And, and our customers have these paradigms and they have these filters that they see everything through. It, it's, think of it like a projector that's in, in the brain. It's, it's in the mind and it projects on a screen exactly what it is that they're seeing. And this is what's going on. What, what we hear is projected as a picture in our mind. What we hear, what we see, what we create, th these things create serious misunderstandings between people. Especially if you take, if you're, if you're if, if different colors, different, different sexes, different religions, all kinds of differences within our personalities Will, will change what we look at and what we see. So you've got, to be, you've got to recognize what a paradigm is. Now let's take a look at a paradigm for just a second. I want, to do, I want you to take a look at this picture. I want, you to, I want you to really see this picture. I want you to look at it intently because there's two pictures rolled into this one picture, right? There's two pictures that are rolled into here. So I want you to take a look at this and I want you to tell me what you see. Right? So, so, so just take a few seconds and s just stare at this picture and tell me what you see. Okay, so now let's take a look and see what's in this picture. Shall we do that? So in this picture, you've got a young lady and you've got an old lady. You've got a young lady and you've got an old lady. So depending on your perspective, 
per paradigm and what you what you think you see there is what you actually saw. And and this is what happens with everybody that we're dealing with out there. Every single person that we deal with has a paradigm. You've got to recognize that they have that paradigm. You've got to realize that they have that paradigm. You've got to deal with that. So a paradigm, are, are paradigms good or bad? And the answer is yes. Yes, they're good and they're bad. They are both. Who has paradigms? Who has a paradigm? And the answer there is everybody. We all have them. I have paradigms. So if you try to get me to see something, I'm going to see it through my paradigms that I have. So every one of us has a paradigm. And how could this paradigm affect your prospect's view of the product's features? How, how do you think that can work? It can affect them in all kinds of ways, right? It can do all kinds of things. It can pull them in one direction or another direction completely away from where you're at in your presentation. And, and how could you apply the paradigms to selling? These are questions you need to be thinking about. How do you, how do you apply a paradigm to selling? Because when, when you're dealing with people, you need to recognize what those paradigms are and use those paradigms in your benefit. You got to use them for your benefit because if they're not in your benefit, then they're going to be at your detriment. So you need to use those paradigms for your benefit. So the types of prospects that you're going to deal with. First of all, you've got outgoing prospects. Prospects that are outgoing are typically dominant people. Dominant people want to be in control. They want to make decisions. They they want to they want to do everything. They want to be in charge. Guess what? I'm a D right? That's the kind of person that I am. You got to understand who are you in this process. And I'm going to go through every one of these and you got to be able to identify who you are so you can then identify who they are and you can start to deal with those paradigms that you have with those particular people. So dominant people, that's, that's me. Now my secondary is inspiring. That's what I do. I'm a high D, secondary I. Inspiring people want you to feel good about you and the people they associate with in making a decision. So, so you, you probably know high D and high I people out there. Um, people that, that, that are demanding. You probably have bosses that are like that. People that want things done at a certain time frame. You may be that same kind of person, and that's okay. I personally believe that D's and I's are great people. We, we, we make good salespeople. We, we tend to kind of get off on, on a tangent sometimes, and we kind of go down paths that we probably shouldn't go down, but we're pretty good people, pretty good salespeople. Now, the other side of it are the reserved types of people we got two types there as well. The first type is supportive people. These are people that want a predictable, comfortable, friendly environment to make a decision in. And by the way, this is my lowest category. This is my lowest category. So if, if you know me personally, if, if we've talked and you've been around me, so you can, you can see the D is my primary, the I is my secondary, the S is my, 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 my fourth one that's the lowest one of all of those. And then the last category are your cautious people. They want procedures and logistics to make good decisions. So these are your four types. Now, your, your cautious people, these are, these are people that they want to know all the facts. They want every single thing in front of them. They want to see everything. And you have to understand that everybody out there has all of these different different uh, categories built into them. And you've got to recognize what they are so that you can talk to those people. Now, the power of questions are very, very important. It gets a prospect's attention and interest in what they're doing and what you're saying as well. The, 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 the power of the question is the quality the, of the prospect. This is, this is what you're going, to, you're going to find out. You're going to be able to build rapport. Th this is everything, getting the prospect's opinion. These are all part of the questions, the power that you're going to get with asking questions and getting that person to give you that information. Qualify 
the understanding, qualify understanding, knowing what they're saying. When somebody says something, you you can you got to be able to understand exactly what it is that they're saying. So qualify the understanding, or excuse me, clarify the understanding, and then check for the prospect's reaction. This is very important as well. You've got to make sure that you understand what is the prospect doing? What is the reaction to what I'm saying? And then find the true motive. Everybody has a true motive. Everybody has a motive for doing everything. And what you have to do is you have to find that true motive. You have to understand exactly what that true motive is. Now, the age of inquiry, uh, Socrates said, leading people to decisions through questions. Leading people to decisions through questions. Think about that. Let that sink in for just a second. Leading people to uh, leading people to decisions through questions, helping them make a decision by the th- by the things that you say. So helping them do that. So let's take a look at that. Think as a buyer. You 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 when you're out there doing your presentation, you always want to be thinking like the buyer thinks, right? You want to be thinking like the buyer thinks. You want to diagnose what the problem is. What is the problem? You, you've got to understand as much about their problem as they know about their problem. So you want to diagnose the problem. You want to discover what the needs are. What are their needs? What do they actually need and what do they want, right? So the needs are very, very, very important. What are the needs to the problem? And then you also have to uncover the secret wants that they have. A lot of people won't tell you their wants. That's something they want to keep locked away. They want to keep deep down inside of them. And you have to make sure that you understand that you have to find out what are their wants. And then one of the things that we always have to do is we have to locate the pain. There's always pain associated with a problem. And you have to locate that pain. What are, where, where is that pain? What is that pain? What is that pain all about? Where does that pain come from? So you have to locate the pain. And then your, 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 your prescription, it, it, it all starts to make sense to you. And it makes sense to them as well. Once you start to locate and put all of this together, it makes sense to them as well. Now, we have to ask three times. You've got you've to think about this for just a second. Prospects rarely, rarely, give a straight answer the first time. They rarely give a straight answer. Um, and, And sometimes they do it because they know they're doing it, and sometimes they do it because they don't know they're doing it. But the principle of three, what it means, it will probably take three questions to get the prospect's real interest of what's going on. So, so you'll have to ask three different questions. Now, the first, first, the first two uh, are, are intellectual. You're going to get their intellectual uh, understanding of the situation, or you might get the factual information of the particular question, or you might get the logical. Now, these are three things that they can give you in the first two questions. They can give you intellectual, they can give you factual, or they can give you logical. Those are very, very important, and they've got to give you that information. But what we really want is that third answer. We, we've got to have the third answer. As a salesperson, if you don't get the third answer, you probably are not going to get the sale. So you have to have that third answer. And the third answer is the emotional piece of it. This is, this is their true interest in it. This is what makes them want to get the security system. This is what makes them want to get the camera system. This is what makes them want to do whatever it is that they're, they're going to do. So you've got to get to the emotional answer. So you've got to get all three. You've got to get the intellectual, the factual, or the logical, and and then you've got to get the emotional piece of it. Now, getting the prospect to visualize, two important questions that go directly, directly to what the prospect, uh, or what the person makes them tick. What, 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 makes them, what, what is it that makes them go around on this? First, what do you want in the security system? What, what do you want? Let, let, let's, let's look at what needs to be emphasized. That's a good question to ask. Let's look at what needs to be emphasized. What, what do you need 
what, what, what needs do you need to, to make sure that this thing is going to work? And the second one is, what would having whatever that, that thing is, a camera system, or a, a burglary system, or whatever, do you mean for it to do? So let, it, this lets you know why the first question is so important. So you've got to do the first question, and then you've got to do the second question. These two are very, very critical in getting the information that you're looking for. It allows you to look into the the unconscious level of the decision-making person. It it allows you to look inside, not just what they're, they're telling you on the outside, but it allows you to get inside their heart, get inside their mind, get inside that person, get inside those feelings and understand what's going on. So make sure that you you get this done. Productive questions, these are the key to probing, to is, is knowing what to ask. So what, what we what we want to do is we have to we have to know. Uh, what, what, what is the convincing presentation that we are going to do? What are the questions that are determined by your objectives? These are all very important. So what does it take to satisfy the prospect? What does it take? What is it going to take to satisfy that prospect? How, how will he make a buying decision? Or how will she make that buying decision? These are very, very important things. Determining the internal power base. You've got to understand, what is the internal power base? Where does it come from? What causes that to occur? You've got to explore for hidden agendas, right? That happens a lot. That happens a lot out there. We get into a hidden agenda. And then one of the things that we need to do is we need to use the needs analysis form. The needs analysis form, we we showed you this earlier. You've got these kind of things. So make sure that you use the needs analysis form. So asking the probing questions. This is very important. Open-ended questions. this This is huge. This encourages the prospect to want to talk to you. These are open-ended questions. When you're, when you're in a selling situation, you want to ask a lot of open-ended questions. Open-ended questions are the most important thing. And, and I have found that, you know, a lot of times it's hard to do. It's hard to do. But open-ended question tells you, you know, what, how, and why questions. You know, what, what is it that you want? How do you want it to work? Why do you want it to work like that? Who the, the, the what, how, and the why questions. Then you want to tell me more phrases. Tell me what are the phrases. Tell me what are the phrases that you like to do. And then the more they share, the more they're going to want to trust you. So these are all things that they do during that open-ended uh, a question. And then the last, the last thing is open the gates and let them roam. So all of these questions, all these open-ended questions that you're going to do is going to open the gate and let these people go where they want to go and tell you what they want to tell you. Very, very important to do. You must understand the difference between open-ended questions and the closed-ended questions. Closed-ended questions now are very important. It steers the prospect to a specific topic. Now, you've got to be able to steer them to a specific topic. It controls the topic and the direction that you're going to go, right? So you've got to be able to do that, and it limits, it's limited to one or two words, typically a yes or no. So you don't want to get them, in a closed-ended question, you don't want to ask them enough information. They've got to give you a lot of of, uh, uh, information for the, for the answer. These are yes or no closed-ended question. These are things that are going to give you a yes or a no, or they're going to, they're going to, they're going to give you something that where you can, you can, you can pin it down. It's, it's very simple. It closes the gate. It gets the pin shut. It closes the gate and closes them in to a particular area. Now, what I have found over the years is that Women do much better with open-ended questions. They, they tend to ask a lot of open-ended questions, and, and people don't mind answering those open-ended questions. But then they have a hard time with the closed-ended questions and closing that down. Now, men, on the other hand, they, they do a great job with the closed-ended questions but have a kind of a hard time with the open-ended. Now, that doesn't mean that if you're a male or you're female, you're going to have that kind of problem. I'm just saying, 
If you are and you do have that, that's, that's a, okay. Work on those things. Recognize that. It's very, very important that you get your open and your closed-ended questions done together at the same time. Typically, you're going to have more open-ended questions. You're going to have a lot more open-ended questions than you're going to have closed-ended questions. So you don't want to do a lot of closed-ended questions. Closed-ended questions just that shuts everything down. Open-ended questions keep everything going. So you want to make sure that you're asking the open-ended questions. And then the, the, the closed-ended questions are to shut down the open-ended question. So practice those things. Practice that a lot. It's very important for you. Now, the primary mission is to identify uh, buying motives. You know, through the question and the listening, we got to listen. We've got to listen to what they're saying. So we're going to be asking questions and we're going to listen. We're going to listen to what they say. So it's very important that we do that. And, and, and selling by questions is very important as well. Understanding their motive. Understanding what is causing that person to want your security system. What is causing that? What is it that makes that happen? Educating the, pros the prospect. You, you, you are asking questions and educating along the way while you're asking those questions. And of course, selling by listening. Selling by listening. Selling by listening. That's very, very important. I'm going to say it again. Selling by listening. You will sell more by listening to what they're telling you than you ever do by telling them and telling them and telling them and telling them information. So make sure that the content of the message, you're listening to that, you're listening to the emotional message, you're listening to all of those things that they have to tell you. It's very, very important. Now, the perfect fit determines a customer's wants, their likes, their needs, and their dislikes. This is what we're trying to do, to, to do. We're trying to determine what are the customer's likes, what are their dislikes, what are their needs. Needs are important. We've got to understand what those needs are. That's very, very important. And then what their dislikes are. We have to understand that. We have to tailor our features to the presentation to their particular needs, their wants right? We have to tailor everything that we're doing to that particular situation. So make sure that you're, you're paying attention to that. What, what will help them make the decision? You want to know what are, the, what are the things that will help them make the decision? What are the, what are the tools? Have you listened closely enough? Do you understand what, what will help them make the decision? Are you, are you preparing him for, for the ending that you are going to bring them to? Are you, are you making that are you setting that up to where you're preparing so that when you get to the ending, they have the ability to, to say yes to what you're doing? There's four types of questions that you're going to run into. The first type is fact-finding, and we're going to talk about these in just a second. We're going to go through the different types of questions that you have. But fact-finding is a very, very important uh, aspect. Quite frankly, people spend way too much time on fact-finding questions, but fact-finding. Number two, Problem identification. You've got to know what their problems are. You've got to be able to understand what their problems are. And then problem implication. You've got to be able to take that problem and, 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 and find out what the pain associated with that is. And then needs payoff. Needs payoff is a very, very important part of this. So let's look at our roadmap to success. And by the way, this commercial, we have a residential commercial. These are all online for you guys to, to get a hold of so you guys can get these kind of, these tools. Um, so we, 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 I, on one of our other uh, training programs, we showed you some of the, the questionnaires that you use with an existing customer with, when we did customer care visits. You, you've got your customer care visit. Well, this is a different one for non-current customers, right? So we have all of these online. Uh, you're going to get your probing questions. You're, the, the first one is your fact finding. We just talked about this. This is this is data, uh, a, a gaining, a, gathering about what's going on in their lives. What what's going on? What what are some of the issues that they have? Problem identification. These these are difficulties and dissatisfactions that our product can solve for them. So we want to make sure we understand what the problem identification is. Problem implication. Uh, this is this is make make. Your, 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 your problems that you have larger and, and, and more pronounced 
so you want to do that. And then your problem, your needs payoff questions, these are, these are going to be things to get the prospect to tell you how your product or service will solve that particular problem for them, right? This is, this is about how you do that. And then we have the listening uh, piece of this where we have the selective listening and we have the uh, responsive listening. We've talked about some of those kind of things, but we need to make sure that we, we listen to everything that they're talking about. And then we need to know our needs analysis. We need to add, add the value. What is the value to anything that we do? We need to add value. Always add value. No matter what you say, there needs to be value added to that. And identify what are the problems that they have. You need to make sure that you identify that. You, you identify exactly what the problems are. And then uncover the needs, the wants, the needs, the wants, and the motive. What's the motive? What is going to motivate these people to do what you need them to do? Create desire. What you're going to do is you're going to be creating desire for your product or your service. So you need to make sure that you've got all the things that you need to be able to create the desire. Generate leads. You're going to generate more leads with every opportunity that you come in, in front of. And then you're going to set up the, 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 the sale and, and the referrals, you're going to set all of that up when you do this. So this is a very important tool that you're going to use every single time that you do that. Now, you can use mine. I, like I said, I got them online. You can use these. You can use your own. You can use your companies. It doesn't matter. But you need to use something that gives you the format that you need to fill out, all the information that you need to fill out, the questions that you need to fill out. This is very important to do. Now, let's talk about the, different, the four different kinds of um, uh, questions that we're going to have. We're going to have fact-finding. Fact-finding are uh, data gathering, data gathering uh, uh, about the facts and, and the background of that particular prospect, right? What, what, are the, what are the facilities, property, size, location, all of that kind of information? Business, family, what is their profile? What what is it that makes them tick? What, what are the things that you need to know? Uh, decision making. How do they make a decision? Does that go strictly by this particular person? Does it get shipped off to somebody else? How is that decision making being made? And, and their security priorities. What, what are their security? What, what security things do they need? What is it that is their priority? What is their major concern? And what current security do they have? Do they, do they have any kind of security? Are they using any kind of security? What's their budget? What do they qualify for? Do they have any money? So these are all things that you have to do. Get an understanding of who they are, how they use the property, and how much they want to spend, and how they're going to make that decision. These are all important aspects that you need to do every single time that, you're, that you go out there and talk to these people. And then once you do this, once you get through the fact-finding, then you go into the problem identification phase. Now, you can't, you can't do one until you do the other. You've got to get the first one done. And then you go into problem identification phase. These are questions to uncover problems, difficulties, dissatisfactions that your product or service can help them with, right? These are things that you can do for them. Right, But you've got to find out what are their problems? What are the things that they're having problems with? You've got to, you've got to understand that. You've got to learn that. What, what, is, what is your biggest security concern is a good question to ask. What is your biggest security concern? Now, you can write these questions down. I'm going to have all these questions put on here. You can write these questions down now. You can have these, or you can get the, the, the needs analysis uh, uh, from our, from our uh, website. But you need to have these questions. Another one, do you have a problem with inventory loss? What, what is the inventory that you're losing? Because in a business, that's a big one. That's a big one in a business. Uh, what difficulties are you having with, and you can, by this time, you should know a lot of things about that particular person, and you can start asking what kind of questions that you want to ask. What kind of difficulties are they having with this? Where did the issue occur? Sounds like a simple question. So many times we don't ask that question. 
Where did the issue occur? And are you concerned about whatever, right? Whatever you think might be a, a part of the problem. And by this time, you know what the concerns are. So you can ask questions that are what, what they are concerned about and then potentially what they might be concerned about because you've heard other people say it and you want to bring it into this situation. And then have you ever considered a person coming through this window, door, whatever it happens to be? Have you ever considered that happening? You want to make sure that you've got that kind of information. And then the last one, or one of the last ones is, who sleeps by this window? Who sleeps here? Who sleeps by this particular window? Who sleeps in this area? Is it a child? Is it a child that you're concerned with? Who sleeps in this area? And then another one, last one, how easy would it be to get through here? How easy is it to get through this particular location? How easy is it to get through this window? How easy is it to get through this door? How easy is it to get through whatever this particular area is? So you want to ask these problem identification questions. Now we've got, we've, we've got the problem identification questions. Now we've got to get the problem implication questions. We got to get this to where people are like, whoa, this is a big deal. Implication questions make the implied needs larger, lar listen, larger and more what? Urgent, right? And more urgent. They make these, these, these problems larger and more urgent. And, and identify and clarify the effects and the consequences of that particular problem. So here are some good questions that you can use on this. Like, what would you do in the event of, in the event of whatever, whatever that particular problem is, you want to use what would you do in the event of. And then the next one, how much money would it cost you if, right? How much money would it cost you if, this got burglarized? How much money would it cost you if this got taken? How much money would it cost you if your child got hurt? How much money would it, would it cost you if? So you want to make sure that you've got that. And what would it feel like if this would occur, right? What would it feel like? What are, what are the emotional ramifications associated with this? Help the prospect run the monetary and the emotional calculator. You want to make sure that you do that. They've got to be able to run that emotional calculator. They've got to run that emotional calculator. And you've got to help them be able to do that. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to feel that with them. You've got, to, you've got to feel the problems that they're going through. You are helping them make the right decision. That's what you're going to be doing here. Now, once we get through the problem implication, we're going to get into the needs payoff. Needs payoff, this is where they start to say, hey, this has to be fixed, and I need you to help me fix this. This is where you get this. So the psychology of the needs payoff questions are to get the prospect telling you about the benefits of solving the problem. What are the benefits of solving this problem? What are the benefits going to be of solving this particular problem? These questions encourage the prospect to focus on solutions solutions, and describe the benefit that the solution will bring for them. That's what you have to do. You have to help them describe what, how is this going to make it better? What is the value of solving this problem? What is the value? They can probably tell you better than you can tell. I, I, I like to ask these in questions. I like to get them to tell me this information, not me tell them. Sometimes I have to tell them. It just depends on the kind of person that you have. You know, we got the D, I, S, and C here. So it depends on the kind of person that you have. But a lot of times you can get them to tell you the information, right? Get, let them tell you the information. Why is it important to solve this problem? Why? What it, why is this going to be so important for you to get it solved? And what benefit do you see in changing the situation? What benefit do you see in changing that situation? How does this, how does this change everything for you? How does this make your life better? How does it help you sleep at night? How does it make you rest during the day? And how would, you, how would changing the situation help you? What's it going to do for you? What's it going to do specifically for you? 
What's it going to do for you? Not for, not for me, not as a salesperson. No, don't, it, it's not about me. It's about the individual. You want to make sure that they're going to, they're going to benefit from this and you got to share with them uh, about how that's going to work. Now, one of the things we always want to do is we want to sell by listening. We've got a conversational mode. Conversational mode's great. Conversationalists are great listeners. You, you listen to what you hear. You, you are always doing that. If, if you want them to like you, listen to them. People like people who listen to them. In general, and I know some don't, but, but in general, most people will like you if you listen to them. They'll, they'll want to tell you want more information if you seem like you really are caring about what they have to say. And, and, and they will tell you everything, everything, everything you need to know about their situation. They'll go on and on and on. If you get a high I person, they'll tell you stuff that you don't even need to know. But so so you you need to find out, you need to, you need to unlock that key. Listening is more is more than just than just hearing them. You, you, you're, you're, you're listening to everything that comes into them. You're not just listening, you're watching the body language that happens. You're watching everything that goes on. You're paying attention to this. It's very, very important to do this. Guide you to the appropriate responses through understanding because if you, if, if you just hear them, you're, you know, you've been on the telephone sometimes and you hear somebody and you say something that's absolutely wrong. If you're, if you're watching them and you're, you're feeling what's going on, you can give them the right information. It verifies your particular understanding. It helps you understand exactly what it is that you need to understand in order to be able to give them the right answer. And it's an important step to determining a solution and, and then presenting that solution. So you have to make sure that you listen clearly and you you hear emotionally what they're telling you so you can give them the right information. Two types of listening. We talked about this earlier on when we were doing the uh, the, the the slide where we had the all the questions and everything. The first type is selective listening. Uh, selective listening is something we all kind of do. Um, we, we listen to specific things. We, we always want to listen to the specific things that the prospect is telling us. We, we, verbal and nonverbal, there's, there's body language associated with this. So you want to listen and you want to watch what's going on. Um, I'm sure you guys are listening to me, but you're also watching me. I hope you're watching me and what I do and what I say because I use my hands and I get involved with it. So you're, you're watching what I'm doing as well as listening to what I'm saying. So hopefully there's some listening going on. You, you're, you want to discover the hidden meaning of this whole thing. You want to make sure that you understand the hidden meaning of, 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 of what they're trying to tell you, right? Now, the other one is responsive listening. Uh, responsive listening acknowledges that, that you are listening to them. You know, it, 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 it's paying attention. It's, it's making sure that they are aware that you're listening to them. If I start looking over here, I'm not paying any attention to what they're saying. I'm not listening to what they're saying. I have to give them the impression that I'm listening by what I do and what I watch. So make sure that you're watching them. Also, what you say, you know, the uh-huhs and, 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 and tell me more. You want to make sure that all that information is coming to you and you're giving them the, the clues that you're, you're paying attention to what they're doing and you're hearing them. So you want to make sure that you're doing this. It's very, very important if they're going to continue to give you as much information that they know that you are listening to these people. Why listen? Well, uh, to get more information, number one, you, you, you've got to get as much information as you possibly can. If you're going to sell this, the more information, the better you have it. Uh, it, 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 it. It's also to help you make the client receptive. So I'm listening to get as much information as I can to make the sale that I need to make, but it's also to let the prospect know that I'm, I'm receptive to what they're saying. And, and by the way, you'll, you'll learn, hopefully, over, over time, that you want to you you give them clues, uh, visual clues, that, it, that it's hurting you as much as it's hurting them. So you want to be able to do that kind of thing. So two types of listening, selective and responsive, and it's very, very important that you do this. Now, techniques for listening. Uh, listening is an active 
and a visual activity. You, you, you've got to be actively involved with this and you've got to be visually involved. You've got to be watching. Well, you've got to be seeing what's going on. So you've got to be looking at these people. You've got to let every part of your body be engaged in this. It's not just your ears. It's your eyes. It's your emotion. It's everything. Everything has to be involved. So we have to use both the listening, both the active, and we have to use the visual activities. Use the prospect's name. It's always important to use the prospect name. Bill, Sarah, Sally, Fred, uh, Mike, uh, Mark, uh, uh, whatever the prospect is, is expecting, whatever their name is, use that name. It'll help you keep a focus on what's going on in that particular uh, segment. And then concentrate, concentrate. Forget everything but the person in front of you. Forget all the stuff that's going on in your life. I know it's hard to do sometimes, and, 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 and you need to do that, though. You really need to do that. You need to forget about all the stuff that's going on, and you need to focus on that individual person. One of the other things that you need to do is pause with silence. Pause with silence. Give the prospect time to organize their response to your questions. Give them, give them time to do that. It's very important to pause and give them time to answer. You don't have to fill up all the, 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 the area with your, your voice. Let them talk. And if they need to have a moment to think, give them a moment to think. Take good notes. You've got to take good notes. Write all this stuff down. Write this stuff down. It, it helps you pay attention, but it also tells them that you are paying attention, that you do care about what they have to say. And then maintain eye contact. Try to keep an eye contact with those particular, with the people that you're dealing with. What is it? What is it that, that, that you need to see? Give them the eye contact. Make sure they, they know you're caring. We, we as people, we, we always are looking at other people and we're trying to see, are they paying attention to us? So we need to make sure that they, they, they feel like we're paying attention. So you want to give them good, maintain that eye contact. And then focus. Focus on what, the, what, what they have to say. Not what you're going to say, but focus on what they're going to say. If, if, you've, if you do this enough and you've practiced this enough, you've got this. You know what's going on. You can get this thing done. So focus on what they're going to say to you. That's important. And, and they'll feel that too, that you're focusing on them instead of focusing on yourself. Now, here are some barriers to effective listening. Presuming, uh, listening without judgment. You, you've got to listen without any judgment whatsoever. You can't, you can't be sitting here going, man, I, I, I've heard all this before. You can't do that. You've got to listen without judgment. You've got to have dis, the, the, the control the distractions, all the distractions that are going on. And, and there could be a lot of distractions. Kids could be playing around. The business could be moving around all kinds of distractions that are going on, and you need to pay close attention to that. You need to, you need to make sure that the distractions don't cause you to miss something. Rushing. How many times have we done this? How many times do you rush? I, I do it all the time. I think high D people and high I people tend to rush more than maybe S's and C's. Um, I, think, I think we do. I, I, I can't prove that, but I think we do. So you need to slow down. You need to take your time. When I'm doing these presentations, sometimes I rush a little faster than I should. I need to slow down. I need to take my time and make sure that people get this. Interrupting. Oh, boy. Interrupting. Saying things. Doing things. Interrupting people all the time. High Ds, high Is, we do it all the time, right? Uh, S's and C's, not quite as bad. Not quite as bad, not quite as bad. So you got to not interrupt. It's rude, it's rude, and people don't like it. Stay on message. You want to stay on message. Don't drift. We have a tendency to drift. We have a tendency to drift off into la-la land. So you've got to stay on message. Make sure that you're on that message all the time. Well, has this been fun? I think this has been a blast. This is one of my favorite topics that uh, that we that we that I talk about. I, I really really like this. So uh, s spend some time, 
if you got some questions for me, ask me some questions, do whatever you need. Our, our, our next uh, topic is going to be value selling. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be uh, Wednesday, April 29th at 10 a.m. We're going to do um, a lot about value selling. Value selling is very important as well. It's, it's huge. There's a lot of stuff that we can talk about with value selling. Um, so, so we got to talk about value selling. It's going to be uh, next Wednesday. So, so make sure that you pay attention to that uh, time. And then again, uh, if you, if you want to schedule any further training with me, if you want me to come to your facility or you just want to talk to me, um, send me an email, uh, jconnard at dmp.com, uh, and I'll be happy to, uh, to talk to you guys about whatever you want to talk about. Uh, we'll get this thing done. So again, thank you very much. I really appreciate all you guys coming to this. I know this. We've got we've got we got many more. We got many more of this. So these these are things that are going to keep going for a while. We're going to have a lot of fun with these. So good luck. Uh, take care and thanks very much. I appreciate it. <music>